Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer that could spread across the nation. And Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. By far the greatest number of the claims, two-thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death. This virus was the cause of a pandemic in 1918 and 1919 that resulted in over half a million deaths in the United States, as well as 20 million deaths around the world. See how easy it is to Thus, the U.S. government's flu. publicity machine was cranked into action to urge all America to protect itself change. against the swine flu menace. Influenza is serious business. During major flu epidemics, millions of people are sick and thousands die. Well, this year you can get protection. The vaccines are safe, easy to take, and they can protect you against flu. So roll up your sleeve. Protect yourself. One of those who did roll up her sleeve was Judy Roberts. She was perfectly healthy, an active woman, when in November of 1976, she took her shot. Two weeks later, she says, she began to feel a numbness starting up her legs. By the following week, I was totally paralyzed. So completely paralyzed, in fact, that they had to operate on her to enable her to breathe. And for six months, Judy Roberts was a quadriplegic. The diagnosis? A neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome. This disease can even kill. Indeed, there are 300 claims now pending from the families of GBS victims who died, allegedly as a result of the swine flu shot. Judy, why did you take the flu shot? I'd never taken any other flu shots, but I felt like this was going to be a major epidemic. And the only way to prevent a major epidemic of a, a really deadly variety of flu was for everybody to be immunized. As part of informing Americans about the swine flu threat, Dr. Sensor's CDC also helped create the advertising to get the public to take the shot. Swine flu? Man, I'm too fast to let it catch me. You'll want to be protected. Get a shot of protection. The swine flu shot. Let me read to you from one of your own agency's memos planning the campaign to urge Americans to take the shot. The swine flu vaccine has been taken by many important persons, he wrote. Example, President Ford, Henry Kissinger, Elton John, Muhammad Ali, Mary Tyler Moore, Rudolph Nureyev, Walter Cronkite, Ralph Nader, Edward Kennedy, etc., etc. Did you talk to these people beforehand to find out if they planned to take the shot? I did not know. Did anybody? I do not know. Did you get permission to use their names in your campaign? I do not know. Mary, did you take a swine flu shot? No, I did not. Did you give them permission to use your name saying that you had or were going to? Absolutely not. Never did. Did you ask your own doctor about taking the swine flu shot? Yes, and at the time he thought it might be a good idea. Um, but I resisted it because well, I was leery of having the symptoms that sometimes go with that kind of inoculation. So you didn't? No, I didn't. Have you spoken to your doctor since? Yes. And? He's delighted that I didn't take that shot. Dr. Michael Hatwick directed the surveillance team for the swine flu program at the CDC. His job was to find out what possible complications could arise from taking the shot and to report his findings to those in charge. Did you know ahead of time, Dr. Hatwick, that there had been case reports of neurological disorders, neurological illness, apparently associated with the injection of influenza vaccine? Absolutely. You did? Yes. How'd you know that? By review of the literature. So you told your superiors, the men in charge of the swine flu immunization program, about the possibility of neurological disorders? Absolutely. What would you say if I told you that your superiors say that you never told them about the possibility of neurological complications? That's nonsense. I can't believe that they would say that they did not know that there were neurological illnesses associated with influenza vaccination. That simply is not true. We did know that. I've said that Dr. Hatwick had never told me of uh, his feelings on this subject. Uh, and he's lying. I guess you would have to um, make that assumption. Then why does this report from your own agency, dated July 1976, list neurological complications as a possibility? I think the uh, 
consensus of uh, the scientific community was that the evidence relating neurologic disorders to influenza immunization uh, was such that they did not feel that this association was a real one. You didn't feel it was necessary to tell the American people that information? Uh, I think that uh, over the, the years we have tried to inform the American people as, as fully as possible. The vaccines are safe, easy to take, and they can protect you against flu. I asked, told Judy to take the shot. She wasn't going to take it, and uh, she never had had shots. And uh, I'm mad with my government because they knew the facts. But they didn't release those facts because they, if they had released them, the people wouldn't have taken it. And they can come out tomorrow and tell me there's going to be an epidemic and they can drop off like flies to me. I will not take another shot that my government tells me to take. Meantime, Judy Roberts and some 4,000 others like her are still waiting for their day in court. This is the CBS Television Network. What cigarette do you smoke? You'll be interested to know how the doctors of America answered that question. Tens of thousands of doctors, doctors in all parts of the country, in every state of the union, doctors in every branch of medicine were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? In this nationwide survey of general practitioners, surgeons, throat specialists, diagnosticians, and so on, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Try Camels yourself. Make the one sensible cigarette test. Make your own 30-day Camel mildness test in your T-zone. Smoke only Camels for 30 days. Enjoy Camels rich, full flavor. And see how well Camels agree with your throat. Pack after pack, week after week. See for yourself why camels are so popular with the doctors of America. Bet you want what I got. Health appeal with a lot of help from Ultra Bright. It's a grin that shines its brightest. It's a freshness you can feel. It's a natural attraction. It's your health appeal. What makes Ultra Bright the health appeal toothpaste? A smile that shines its natural whitest, sparkling clean breath, and cavity fighting fluoride. It's a natural attraction, it's your ultra bright. The health appeal toothpaste. I'm the healthiest 55 year old you've ever seen. Hey, I play golf every weekend. Get a shot of protection, the swine flu shot. Joe brought it home from the office. He gave it to Betty and one of his kids and to Betty's mother. But Betty's mother went back to California the next day. On her way to the airport, she gave it to a cab driver, a ticket agent, and one of the charming stewardesses. At school, Joe's kid gave it to some other kids, and Mrs. Merrill got it and gave it to her husband. In California, Betty's mother gave it to her best friend, Dottie. But Dottie had a heart condition and she died. But before she died, Dottie gave it to her girlfriend, the mailman, the paper boy, and the vet when she went to pick up her chihuahua. If a swine flu epidemic comes, this is how it could spread. You'll want to be protected, especially if you're elderly or chronically ill. Get a shot of protection, the swine flu shot. Nose, throat, and accessory organs not adversely affected by smoking Chesterfields. First such report ever published about any cigarette, and it applies only to Chesterfield. A responsible consulting organization reports this study by a competent medical specialist and his staff on the effects of smoking Chesterfields. A group of people smoked only Chesterfields for six months in their normal amount, 10 to 40 a day. 45% of the group have smoked Chesterfields from one to 30 years for an average of 10 years each. At the beginning and end of the six months period, each smoker was given a thorough examination, including x-rays. The examination covered the sinuses, nose, ears, and throat. After a thorough examination of every member of the group, the medical specialist stated, it is my opinion that the ears, nose, throat, and accessory organs of all participating subjects examined by me were not adversely affected in the six months period by smoking the cigarettes provided. Remember this report and buy Chesterfields.
regular or king size. Premium quality Chesterfield, much milder. CBS presents this program in color. Our ads of the last few weeks, different from what you usually see, have tried to raise questions we feel are extremely important. As the first generation of the technological society, we have been acted upon by forces of such power that few, if any, of us can understand. Extensive information gathering on every American, human experiments with drugs and psychosurgery, electronic surveillance, the era of the computer, invasion of privacy. Growing government and corporate power over our lives, a people plagued by dehumanization, loneliness, and violence. Dramatic? Perhaps. But we are losing control of our technology and our lives. Not so long ago, people in a similar situation did not awaken to the forces around them. Are we so unwise as to do the same? Thank you. 